Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Eddie Vacation with Consultant Human Resource Development and Training Specialist Eddie Frederick is powered by Grenada Cooperative, Bank Limited, and Tillian Group, Country Cold Store. Self-isolation is not a prison sentence, but it's the safest way to protect the people around you from possibly getting sick. Continue to comfortably buy your groceries and whatever you need, even when in quarantine. Use Corp Bank's e-banking to transfer funds to a close friend or family member's account and get them to do your shopping for you. Log on to www.grenadacoopbank.com and sign up for Coop Bank's e-banking. I want the best for my family. So every meal has to be perfect. Every bite has to say, mm, mm, mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the best in frozen meats and vegetables has to come from the country cold store. Hams, turkeys, sausages, beef, pork, chicken. I just don't know my family is in safe hands. Thank you, country cold store, for being there for us for the past 40 years. The country cold store, providing the best in frozen meats and vegetables since 1969. Co-op Bank introduces e-payments. Our new e-banking feature that allows you to send money to friends or family. E-payments, a swift, simple, and secure way of transferring money. Welcome home. Believe in our strength. We'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. The assurance we give, it's so glad to see Peace of mind, that's our service guarantee We look after all our family Yes, we do at every opportunity MTU, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions For your protection and investment Live well financially We have a special challenge to all who decide to come into the room And be a part of edification the person making the most outstandingly relevant comment in keeping with our topic is in for a special prize. On the table is a breakfast for two at Oliver's Restaurant at world famous Six Star Diamond Five Diamond Spice Island Beach Resort. Lucky winner must make a reservation and present gift certificate upon arrival at the appointed time to redeem this gift. This will give you a wonderful opportunity to experience great service like you've never experienced it right here in Grenada from a business that is locally owned, locally managed, locally staffed, and locally trained. A true symbol of our national independence, Spice Island Beach Resort. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Eddie. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful folks. Good evening and welcome to uh, this, my Hala. It's on the end of live channel and my third for 2022. As we continue to cope with the anxieties of many, and God knows that they are quite a bit. I'm just trying to get something here uh, organized. Right, I have managed to get that organized. So, folks, if it ain't one thing, it's another. And so the tumult is on, and we can trust and pray. All we can trust and pray is that it subsides soon. It's quite obvious that when a fully loaded boat is headed in a certain direction, full steam ahead that is, and it is required to change direction for whatever reason, when the captain obeys the command and starts turning that wheel, there is usually a part of maneuver that is referred to as the drag. And that particular drag is something that I'll explain it to you. What do we mean by that? It is impossible for the boat to change direction without continuing. You hear me? Without continuing to proceed in the same direction for a period before it finally changes course and be on its way to its new direction. 
too many of our people suffer from destination disease. They reach a certain level, earn a certain degree, buy their dream car or house, and then what do they do? They course. In the area of their degree, among the very few who move up into their PhDs, we have those who think because they have attained that level, they have really arrived. Well, I want to advise you on this a little bit. In fact, a PhD only indicates that one knows a lot about a little part of an entire subject. Gone are the days when the education system exposed one from the beginning to everything. In other words, from our primary school days, we were exposed to many subject areas. And as we enter secondary school, the focus became narrower to 12 or even 13 subjects. Moving up and on to college level, we were even led to focus on an even narrower corridor in preparation for our career path that we decided to take, whatever that may be. And so you realize that from the breadth of exposure that we were privy to at the primary level, it started to slim down to specialization. Hence the reason why we are now knowing a lot of a little. The PhD level is therefore where it crescendos. It is therefore instructive for us to recognize that, you know, uh, respect for the knowledge base of our PhDs must restrict it, must be restricted to their subject area. And we need to stop thinking of them as bright as paint or sharp as attack in general knowledge, because that is definitely not the case. Many of us, many of us in our community who are highly certificated, we fall in the category of settling right where your studies and your degrees ended. We never picked up another book. Now, when our education system was really good, a sound primary education is all it took to have got many people through life. An example of this was the late Sir Leslie Pear. And no one could have faulted him in grammar, sentence structure, and general knowledge, simply because he kept learning. Studies show that 50% of high school graduates never read another entire book other than the ones they had to read for literature in school. One reason may be that they see learning as something that you do only in school, just something one does only for a period of life instead of a way of life so that they can learn and continue to grow. We all ought to have learned when we were in school, for instance. Our teachers, our coaches, and most of all, our parents taught us. We were expected to learn when we were of school age. Why do so many of us feel that once we were finished with a certain level of education, I'm done with school. I have finished my training now. I've got a good job now, and that's it. If those people do not understand that life is dynamic, very dynamic, and always changing, they will get left. Many of our local professionals are stuck in time with knowledge. Knowledge that was good for way back when, which if applied now is not relevant to their field anymore because their field has evolved, has moved on. So when people stop learning, they lose big times. Winners never stop learning. The God many of us love to talk about when it suits us did not create us to reach one level and stop there. Whether you're nine or 90 years old, you should constantly be learning, improving your skills and getting better at what you do. You have to take responsibility for your growth, folks. 
growth is never automatic. What steps are you taking to improve yourself so that this bouncing low, lally drain discussions and narratives that we are, our nation seems immersed in will not attract you? What steps have many of you square pegs in wrong holes, whether in the government service or in the private sector? What steps have you taken to improve and cement the positions you were wrongfully given? What steps did you take to make sure that no reproach could befall those who gave you that golden opportunity in life? What steps did you take to ensure that if change comes, you can prove yourself worthy of the positions that you now hold, even though you were wrongfully given them in the first place? Are you reading books, listening to educational and motivational audios and or videos? Are you taking any courses on the internet or attending any webinars? Do you have any mentors or are you one to join the bandwagon and criticize the positive leaders of society just because you were told to hate them? Are you gleaning information from people who know more than you? Are you one to follow rubbish on social media and ignore the positive vibes that are good for you? Winners don't coast through life relying on what they have already learned while refusing to learn more. You have treasures, folks, on the inside, gifts, talents, and potential put in you for use at the right time. Those gifts will not automatically come out. They must be developed. The wealthiest places on earth are not the oil fields of the Middle East or the diamond mines of South Africa. The wealthiest places on earth are reported to be the cemeteries. Buried in the ground are businesses that were never formed, books that were never written, songs that were never sung, dreams that never came to life, potential that was never released. So don't go to your grave with that buried treasure within you. Keep growing. Keep learning. Every day we should have a goal to grow in some way, to learn something new. If you are put, for instance, more than you know, you could imagine, you, you're put in a place where things are happening around you and you have no clue, then what? You are unconscious. In you are put more than you can ever imagine, folks. You have gifts and talents that nobody else has. A new season of and for growth is at hand. Do not get stagnant and hold on to the old undesirable habits. Keep growing, knowing that God has something better in front of you. So should you take measures to change how you value yourself? You will not continue your life and then pass on as one to be easily forgotten. You remember I made that point several times. There are too many people in Grenada who are easily forgotten. They are forgotten where, while they're alive. When they're dead, people don't even remember they lived. Too many unforgettable people living in Grenada because they are not prepared to stand out. You are not prepared to do something that makes you stand out. When people stop learning, folks, they lose big times. Winners never stop learning. Let's take a little break here. And we come back with, of course, some cherished pearls. Come on, hit the share button and let's get some more people in the room. Don't forget, you're invited to make comments. The most attractive and most relevant comment to the subject matter here this evening will win 
I'll tell you about it a little later on. You'll, you'll hear. You'll hear again. Eddie Vacation with Consultant Human Resource Development and Training Specialist Eddie Frederick is powered by Grenada Cooperative, Bank Limited, and Tillian Group, Country Cold Store. The strength of views and opinions expressed during edification are not necessarily a reflection or representation of the sponsors and or affiliates of this program. Eddie Frederick has got it all. We have a special challenge to all who decide to come into the room and be a part of edification. The person making the most outstandingly relevant comment in keeping with our topic is in for a special prize. On the table is a breakfast for two at Oliver's Restaurant at world famous Six Star Diamond Five Diamond Spice Island Beach Resort. Lucky winner must make a reservation and present gift certificate upon arrival at the appointed time to redeem this gift. This will give you a wonderful opportunity to experience great service like you've never experienced it right here in Grenada from a business that is locally owned, locally managed, locally staffed, and locally trained. A true symbol of our national independence, Spice Island Beach Resort. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Deliver, deliver, deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Wonderful folks. I'd like to welcome you back. But of course, you know, at this juncture, I usually pay homage to all the people who are in the room. So we have Wendy Ann, Cynthia, uh, Humble Man, uh, Christine, Maria, Roxy, Samantha, uh, Karen, oh, sorry, Queen, Queen, sorry, 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 Andrea, Agatha, Debbie, we have uh, Andal, Michelle, Ashton, uh, Melissa, and Christopher, welcome. That's on one platform. The other platform we have, hold on a minute, folks. Keep your clothes on. We have here Rod, uh, Rodrigue, uh, Facebook user. That's so interesting. <laughs> uh, Sawandi, blessings, my friend, blessings. Of course, I intend to quote you this evening. Uh, we have Wayne. We have Margaret, Silvani, uh, Lima, John. Elise, Jennifer, uh, Rohan, Elisa, Gloria Jean, Gloria Jean or Gloria Jean. Uh, who else? Josie from London. Oh, beautiful. Welcome, my dear. Elvin, uh, Jacintha, Suzette, April, lovely name. Uh, we have Tamika, Donna, and who else? Who else? Who else? Marva, Yvette. Uh, Cynthia, I don't know if I said that before, but Charmaine, uh, Jenny, Linda, Hadasha, Hadasha, my darling, blessings to you, my dear. Blessings, blessings. We have uh, Koi, Melindia, Melindia, uh, Lucian, Barbara, who else, who else, Oswin. Folks, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's really a plump pleasing pleasure to have you. We have Giselle. Uh, welcome back. Now on Tuesday last, the Deacon Mitchell-led administration celebrated its second month in office. After 27 years of his predecessor administration, enjoying uninterrupted power. Even though during the period 2008 to 2013, they were not in office. You notice the interchangeable words here now? power and office. They still enjoyed uninterrupted power as very little if any of the previous well-positioned operatives were never removed, much to the Tillman Thomas-led administration's peril. And that justifies many of us referring to the entire 20th June 1995 to 23rd June 2022 period as dominated totally by the last rudderless administration. The zealous supporters and advocates for change during the last election campaign, especially since Deacon Mitchell's election to the leadership of the main opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, are not about to allow a repeat of 2008 to 2013 period. They therefore seem hell-bent on remaining vigilant to ensure that this round be totally different. And in fact, have been calling for the heads 
of any and everyone who was positioned in areas of sensitivity to be removed. Many of them are going as far as to call names since they see these people as enablers of a system that raped and pillaged the nation in broad daylight. It is unfortunate for those whose names are called and identified as people that should be marginalized and sidelined. Very unfortunate. This speaks volumes for their record and not good at all. Those of us old enough to have heard this from our mothers during our growing up days would agree. If you didn't day, your name couldn't call. Could you imagine these people allow themselves to be used by a despot to help achieve his own ends at the expense of a structured and well-ordered society? The captain has changed as per the will of the majority and the ship has been ordered to take a different direction. The new captain has to be a real fool, a paputan, to keep the same crew in the same positions if he really wants to make real progress on his new course. If he does, he does so at his peril. The zealous supporters of the new government, better put, party in office, who quiver every time they remember the failings of the Tillman Thomas-led administration, which almost placed the party in total obscurity, remember? For two consecutive terms, not a seat, are not about to sit by and let that happen again. The same way the captain of the NDC was energized by enthusiasts for change, and they succeeded. I believe it's the same way these said enthusiasts are remaining woke, as the Americans would say, to make sure their work was not in vain. Now, based on how many people surrendered to the emasculation dished out as a matter of course over the last 27 years by the diabolical leader and his inferior infidels, it would appear that their followers thought everybody would have remained maimed by fear. Well, that has changed. And the greedy and vultures, otherwise known as the beneficiaries, pas parasites and suckers, have been sectioned. And the majority of people are saying they have had enough and are willing to give a new breed of leadership a chance. The chance that Grenada deserves to be sanitized, scrubbed and reconstructed with a plan to include all. The willing enthusiasts who followed blindly the last NNP train to nowhere and who were prepared to enjoin a process to siphon the national coffers. And as long as they continued to benefit, no fault could have been found with that paralyzing system of governance, the parasitic oligarchy, are all to take a back seat and understand. Their free ride is over. The free ride has ended and that the state can no longer carry them. The culture of handout has ended and it is time to understand and appreciate that. The denial that you continue to go through that June 23rd liberated Grenadians from the stranglehold of the nonsense you aided and abetted. For all these years, just because there were some benefits in it for you directly or otherwise, must not be allowed to immobilize you from taking the right action to do what you need to do in order to be trusted, to be integrated into the normal society this change has afforded us all. With all the hullabaloo that we are hearing, and the crying foul by the mostly unqualified to so cry. We have not heard a word yet from the authorities, the sitting administration. And you know what? They are correct. After all, 
they have so much mess to clean up, on top of which they have to ensure their transformative agenda takes root and fulfilled. Can you blame them for not getting involved in people squabbling with other people while other fools who ought to know better blaming them for the enthusiasm of supporters who decide to stand at the gate to protect the interest of the change they voted for? Congratulations to the new NDC leadership for keeping your head down and focusing on the job at hand. There are enough enthusiastic supporters and sympathizers out here to take care of these infidels. One thing I realize is that the infidels of the losing side cannot match wits with the guardians at the gates of this valuable change. You know, sometimes when we are privy to the, the, the negatives of the few, we tend to think it's a lot of people. No, I am one who fervently believe there are more honest people in the world than dishonest people. You know why? If there were more dishonest people than honest people, supermarkets would have been abolished. Let that resonate. You remember I told you what my mother, God rest her soul, used to tell us? The dollar doesn't usually make a sound. It is the change that makes noise. These rapid responses we are witnessing by the zealous to protect the interest of the Deacon Mitchell-led NDC is not surprising as the newcomers to the political stage, the awakened youth of the country, are not prepared to go down. So the old style of politics has actually clashed with their resolve to be firm gatekeepers. And we all know what is likely to happen when an exhausted, expired, rolling object attempts to move fiercely in the direction of a totally immovable one. No fireworks are expected because the expired, out-of-timing object is destined to perish. Make no mistake about that. I have seen and heard calls made for all soldiers to come out and join in the battle against the wrongdoings of the period 1995 to June 23rd, 2022, by the Drakes who raped this country. Now is not the time to take a day off, because all who have cocoa in the sun are not taking a day off with their attempts to distract from their misdeeds and crimes against this nation. The call further directs the new authorities to expose them all and their ghost companies, which set out to fleece our treasury of millions. Together, we pledge to take Grenada forward with or without those who insist on supporting those drakes of the pre June 23rd, 2022 era. You cannot be a victim if you are prepared to work diligently for your country. You can only be a victim if you continue to take direction from your rejected NNP minister while serving a government of the will of the majority of people. Remember 31,430 people representing 51.84% of the eligible voters gave a mandate to nine elected members of parliament to carry on with their agenda for meaningful change. Meaningful change does not include keeping people whose main aim is to bring news to the former ministers, not performing, and instead of putting them somewhere else, you keep them in their substantive posts. This government would be looking for serious horn, similar to the horn their party received in 2008 to 2013 because of inaction. You see, when people stop learning, they lose big times. Winners never stop learning. Let's take a little break here. Remember, there's a lot more heat to come.
Eddie Vacation with consultant human resource development and training specialist Eddie Frederick is powered by Grenada Cooperative, Bank Limited, and Tillian Group, Country Cold Store. The strength of views and opinions expressed during edification are not necessarily a reflection or representation of the sponsors and or affiliates of this program. Eddie Frederick has got it all. We have a special challenge to all who decide to come into the room and be a part of edification. The person making the most outstandingly relevant comment in keeping with our topic is in for a special prize. On the table is a breakfast for two at Oliver's Restaurant at world famous Six Star Diamond Five Diamond Spice Island Beach Resort. Lucky winner must make a reservation and present gift certificate upon arrival at the appointed time to redeem this gift. This will give you a wonderful opportunity to experience great service like you've never experienced it right here in Grenada from a business that is locally owned, locally managed, locally staffed and locally trained. A true symbol of our national independence, Spice Island Beach Resort. Inspiration, motivation, great advice and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver, can deliver, can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Edification with consultant human re wonderful wonderful folks welcome back and welcome to the those of you just joining us welcome 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 there must be a cooling off period folks for these devoted nnp operatives who will stop at nothing to see to it that their style of management returns so they could continue to benefit while the majority of people can go to hell Hell is over as the devil has been dethroned. As I said before, zealous supporters whose resolve it is to remain awake since the victory of the NDC cannot be blamed. They intend to hold the feet of the leadership of the party and government to the fire to make sure they take necessary action to create the enabling environment where their agenda can be championed in short order. Neither the party nor the administration can be blamed for the utterances of their zealous supporters. After all, many of them have been marginalized and given up for dead for most of the preceding 27 years. The pre-election campaign was run and highly influenced by people who wanted to see an end to the diabolical nastiness that was passing itself off as a government in and over the state of Grenada. Do you recall a poster circulating by the NDC stalwart of a youthful supporter called Sawandi? NNP has their people. NDC has the rest of Grenada. Vote NDC. Never underestimate the role, the influential role this Sawandi played. I followed him all the time on social media. I still continue to follow him. Any one of you who think the almost perfect NDC social media presence during the campaign was the doing of the party and the party alone, I have a piece of beachfront land in Grandi Tang that I would like to give to you. Because as the Antiguans say, nothing tal go so. The proliferation of sound bites, blogs, vlogs, posters, write-ups, ads, and even immediate responses to the gaffes of the inferior NNP on their various campaign flat, um, platforms were done by youthful enthusiasts eager to see the back of the previous nastinesses. Could you imagine you had a government and the most apt description you could find to call the collection of them is nastinesses. Oh, man. Grenadians, y'all really toyed with a lot of nonsense in the past, you know. Those are the same people who have agreed to stand in the gap to protect the change that they won. It is therefore a fact that must be taken into consideration with all the forthcoming spirited pushback to all the cries of victimization by the architects of victimization themselves for all of the last almost 30 years. Could you imagine? 
that group of nastiness that we had posing as government victimized every decent Grenadian just because they would not support their nastiness and crying victimization today. This is vexing, you know, folks. It is such a disgusting shame for all the people who ought to know better, who, like the rest of us, were witnesses to the gross disrespect meted out to the general public by the diabolical leader some of them so love. And when they hear immeasurable disrespect going back to that creature, and rightly so, they have a problem with that. But could you really respect disrespect? The answer is hell no. There are so many on social media who try to come across in the middle and tout not being a card-bearing member of any party and who tout so-called Christian virtues and principles who all of a sudden find something wrong with a new administration making room for its people by right positioning them as agents of the change the majority voted for. All you retarded, something wrong with all you? Interestingly, you heard nothing from them in 2013 when properly qualified and professional Grenadians were unceremoniously dismissed from the public service, uprooted, transferred, put on desk with no work to do. We have commercial companies which were owed by government, never paid for services rendered, and the few who got paid catch their nenen to be so paid. Not a squeak from these nastinesses. But all of a sudden, they have a voice. Go and check the treasury and you would see names of people on a list that, of citizens and companies that have been owed by the government since 95, 96, 97, 98, right down to the period preceding 23rd June 2022, and will not be paid as long as that group of nastiness were in office. A former government minister and elected member of parliament, Michael Batiste, put it quite succinctly when he proffered the following, which no one could have said even better. Quote, election has consequences. When a person is employed by government and campaign for a political party, whether working for a high or low salary, you put your livelihood at risk. If therefore you are sent home, stop crying victimization. The new government should be given an opportunity to hire its own people to do the same political work that you are employed to do for your losing party. You can't play mass and freight powder. When your party loses, your position becomes optional. In this case, obsolete. The opposition should not be wasting time crying foul. Remember the new MPs have campaign workers too. We need to grow up politically, unquote. Woo, I salute you, Michael Batiste. Wonderful, wonderful piece. What else can be said in defense of all those who are crying foul and continuing to do so in the face of logic? Yes, things are hard. But whether there is election or not, things are hard. In fact, the last administration presided over bare decadence, total disorder, while some eat a food and the majority was starved out. Their decrepit policies made a few rich on the strength of creatively positioning themselves so the treasury could foot the bill for lots of stuff that they were sole providers of. The decrepit policies transformed our people into needy, greedy, and vultures. Interestingly, they kept the needy, dunce, and in a rare level of stupor to believe that they were their saviors with a little seed 
and debushing programs while they put children of these dependent nationals in training to follow their footsteps on the path to dunceness, to become needy to, by doing what? Enrolling them in an Imani program that had no end. Thus the culture of dependency spread like wildfire, where these said programmed dunce people became expectant that things will remain the same till death. Then they woke up on June 23rd, and when the night of that fateful day came, they got to realize their free paper burnt as things were going to be different going forward. Their voices are among the noise we are hearing under the caption, victimization. Folks, you have a chance to break that yoke that these nastinesses have been holding over you. Times have changed. And once you are ready to cleanse your minds and thus your thinking, you stand a better chance under this dispensation to experience a decent standard of living and quality of life. The greedy have not been spared of their trauma when the results of the election were released and they realized that there shall be no more largesse. The vultures started to croak as they know the corruption they were party to during their time of plenty as sponsored by the state had come to an end. The only gr group, the only group within the three, needy, greedy, and vultures, that this nation should show any empathy for is the needy. We have to provide for them but it must not be done as a continuum of the last wicked intentioned system. It must be pinned to a program of inspiration, motivation, education, and empowerment. Comprehensive community outreach programs, similar to those of the People's Revolutionary Government, PRG, minus the ideology, must be designed for delivery to edify that almost lost segment of our population. We have to get them to think for themselves, rinse their brains from the fixed state of dependency that the diabolical nastinesses and the band of brigands inculcated in them. There was only one reason why they devised that devious plan. To keep a large segment of the population dunce, unthinking, and totally dependent. So they could be the people responsible for this diabolical lot remaining in office. The only how this last group that paraded as government for most of the last 30 years could be described. Nastinesses. It is time for this nation to move forward together and stop falling for the distractionary tactics that they come up with, as if to give life to Lazarus Joseph's theory captioned, Return of the Boss, Part 2, Plot. Make noise over any issue, victimization, debushing, etc. Don't be afraid to defend the indefensible. Destabilize the new regime as much as you can. When water more than flour, use our ground soldiers, the media, union, poor and vulnerable to call for me to come back and run in 2027, even though I'm at the age of 80, my words. I'll pretend that I give it up. So continue the rallying call in the interests of the disenfranchised. I'll eventually acquiesce and announce I'll run one more time, not because I want to, but because Grenada must be rescued from the jaws of tyranny. By that time, the bought and paid for civil society should start their own protest. At the party's convention, I'll be nominated and I'll be told I can't decline. Grenada needs me more than ever. Interestingly, Lazarus gave some credits here. Screenplay 
by the New York chapter, directed by the boss himself, scored by the suffering entertainment sector, produced by those in political exile. First preview, the Brooklyn Film Festival in January 2023. Will open at cinemas in Grenada by April 2023. A movie by the Watch How to Be Relevant production, and I deserve it Film Inc. In association with Power is Paramount Productions. Aaron's Lazarus satirical production. Isn't that beautiful? Lazarus is so creative, such a bright fellow. But you see, when people stop learning, they lose big times. Winners never stop learning. Folks, pay attention because if you don't pay attention, you will get left. Let's take a break here and we'll come right back again. Eddie Vacation was consulted human resource development and training specialist. Eddie Frederick is powered by Grenada Cooperative, Bank Limited, and Tillian Group, Country Cold Store. The strength of views and opinions expressed during edification are not necessarily a reflection or representation of the sponsors and or affiliates of this program. Eddie Frederick has got it all. We have a special challenge to all who decide to come into the room and be a part of edification. The person making the most outstandingly relevant deep thought take is in for a special prize. On the table is a breakfast for two at Oliver's Restaurant at World Famous Six Star Diamond Five Diamond Spice Island Beach Resort. Lucky winner must make a reservation and present gift certificate upon arrival at the appointed time to redeem this gift. This will give you a wonderful opportunity to experience great service like you've never experienced it right here in Grenada from a business that is locally owned, locally managed, locally staffed, and locally trained. A true symbol of our national independence, Spice Island Beach Resort. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver, can deliver, can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Wonderful, wonderful. Welcome back, folks. Welcome back. Whether you're a teacher, a carpenter, a banker, or a doctor, don't settle where you are, folks. Don't coast or rest on your laurels. Stir up what you have in you and get better at it. Get better at what you are capable of doing. Think about David in the Bible, for instance. He was out in the shepherd fields taking care of his father's sheep. In today's term, we would say he had a boring minimum wage job and no friends, and it didn't look like there was any opportunity for growth. If his brothers got the prestigious jobs in the army, David could have slacked off, been sloppy, and thought, no reason to develop my skills. I have no opportunity. I am stuck out here with these sheep. Instead, while he was alone, he practiced using his slingshot day after day month after month. He would have been envisioned setting up a target, slinging rocks after rocks again and again, getting better, making adjustments, and sharpening his skills. He became a sharpshooter, a marksman, so precise, so skillful, he could hit a bullseye from a hundred meters away. When God sought somebody to defeat a giant, somebody to lead his chosen people, he looked to see who was prepared. He wanted someone who had developed their skills, who had taken the time to cultivate the gifts that he had put in them. He didn't choose just anyone. He selected the, a skills marksman who could hit a target with precision. How many of the people who are crying foul among us today, who are really wrong pegs in square holes, and are hardly good for anything and were given opportunities to better themselves by way of authority and good salaries, took a hint and developed themselves instead of using their newfound positions to bring news and help destroy others. How many of you did that so today you would be good for something instead of being good for nothing with a population calling for your heads? How many of you, 
I have been told a long time now, it is better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. We have to understand and appreciate that that story in the Bible, the same Bible that many of you Jesus industry convenient Christians love to tote and quote, indicates that when God seeks somebody to promote, he doesn't just randomly close his eyes and say, I'll pick this one. You won the lottery. It's your lucky day today. No. The master looks for people who have developed their skills. And this is what the current administration in Grenada is looking for. Skilled people who can serve the transformative agenda which this country's affairs so badly need. But so many of you stopped learning and instead started to depend on handouts that you must lose big times. Winners never stop learning. We need to bring Grenada back to the time when our people used to be among leading regional nations when it came to education. We once led in many ways. First this, first that, first the other. In a positive sense, of course. But from the time our people elected this NNP under this diabolical, visionless, self-seeking leader on the 20th of June, 1995, it was downhill fast for the civilization to hell in a handbasket. Here we come. Our people became contented with being branded poor and vulnerable by the political directorate of the day, while politicians under the NMP's tutelage turned poverty into a self-serving, lucrative business for themselves. All this time, the majority of people being relegated to the back, mixing up suffering for doing well. Even faith started to move the people's money in addition to moving the usual mountains. When we read about David standing before Goliath and slinging that rock, sometimes we think it was all God's hand at work. In a sense, it was God. But in truth, the truth is God didn't sling the rock. It was David who developed and used the skills that God gave him. Like David, God has put in you, each and every one of us, a set of special skills that will slay giant challenges like those the diabolical NNP left for us all to navigate through and open new doors. These skills will thrust us forward to new levels. But here's the key. Your skills have to be developed. Every day you spend learning, growing, and improving will prepare you for that new level. Take this as a call to action. There are new levels in your future. Things have shifted in your favor on Thursday, 23rd June, 2022. God has removed the yoke of the devil over this nation. All you who seem reluctant to believe that the devil has been maimed and rendered useless on 23rd June, you will eat the bread that he need. We should all be focused on people who are prepared. People who are taking steps to improve, to be integral to the overdue forward movement of this nation. If you are truly serious about fulfilling your destinies, just stand in line. You want to be productive and give value for money when you work? You are qualified. But if you are going to ask who the F so-and-so think he is in reference to your line minister and forget you are working on an expired contract to further the cause and agenda of an expired and discarded group, you will stand the consequences of your mindlessness. If you want to be passing around a cantankerous voice note and don't care where it ends up, you cannot be serious about wanting your job or even expecting to be included on the team of anyone that you are openly rude and jamet about. There are consequences for such action. And you ought to realize that you jamet your prospects 
for consideration for continued employment. In addition to your people, or people rather being forgiving, we are also easy to forget. Your transgressions will be forgotten and forgiven only if you earnestly desire to be part of the much needed transformation Grenada deserves. You know, folks, we see the results of people who have stopped learning. After passing through an already perpetually deficient education system, where our focus as a nation continues to be on passing subjects while graduating students not being able to read and write properly, let alone reason at any acceptable level. Yet for all, with this abysmal reality, so many of our people have stopped learning every day. Many of our people seem stuck at an undesirable level of existence and believe those who are satisfied to be referred to and highly regarded as poor and vulnerable while they are politically abused by miscreants and old crooks passing themselves off as politicians and leaders. While these said people are called poor and vulnerable, the right narrative accompanies this classification as if to convince their subjects and of course the world listening that they really care while these said people are strung along with being given just enough to keep them perpetually needy. Yet for all, the dispensers of the empty narrative want to talk about changes to this nasty practice where even faith is being used to move mountains of taxpayers' money from the National Treasury. While our national festival that brings in millions, Carnival, millions to our national coffers, is being given pittance to function. Could you imagine that? How could some of our people who are totally, you know, well, not totally, but today, very vocal, very, very vocal today, since the bolt has been removed from their one-time locked jaws, can sleep at night knowing that the wanton inferiorization and decimation of our population by this lot of infidels was taking place for most of the last 30 years. How could some of you sleep knowing you were supporting that? Before I close this broadcast, folks, I want to declare that unions have their work to do in representing their members' interests. I want to repeat that. Unions have their work to do in representing their members' interests. I want to quote a one-time outstanding local trade unionist. The accent here is on one time. Who shall remain nameless when that one-time leader said, quote, if managers do not know what their responsibilities are to their employers, sorry for them. But we know what our responsibilities to our members are. And I have no problems with that strong statement. That to me is more than fair. Unfortunately, there is mostly an imbalance on the scale since many managers and some business owners who are themselves managers of their very businesses seem to lack knowledge of their responsibilities to the businesses they serve. You see, they too stopped learning from the time they assumed such positions. We have seen many unreasonable managers who seem more focused on the trappings of their positions ignore the human element. They forget that employees' treatment of customers is a total reflection on how they are themselves treated. There's a certain grocery outlet that I notice is dwindling. Supporters or customers are actually dwindling from going there. Why? People could tell how the owner treats the workers because the workers don't care nothing about the customers. It's simple. Yes, we know of the several mindless employees 
who will destroy the very business they work for because of extremely poor attitudes on account of their poor socialization. But this is where training and development comes in. Training such team members once and expecting durable and sustainable change will not cut it. They need to be trained constantly. And not because they are weak, but because you want to continue to build them into strong dispensers of great service and thus give a great account of themselves as service providers while making the customer's experience something to die for. Too few places in Grenada are known for training their staff complement in this way, considering it as the investment it is, while the majority don't, and see it as an expense instead, and lose so much more in the end, starting with the very reputation of their business. See that grocery outlet I told you of? I wouldn't be surprised, it may not even last another six months. Because people who are spending their hard to come by money these days ain't going for terrorism because that place offers terrorism. The majority of businesses in Grenada give relevance to unions because of the poor treatment meted out to their staff complement by mindless managers and in some cases, mindless owners. This caused the unions to focus more on the lack of proper facilities and conveniences, let alone wages, while the very people on whose behalf they bargain and fight vigorously for are left rough and tumble with no regard for respect for their superiors. Who do we blame? The source of all this points right back to poor managers, poor leaders. But having said all of this, union leaders who operate in our local sphere are customers also and are very privy to the poor to abysmal service dished out to the public by many commercial enterprises, whether state-run or private, of which they are bargaining agents. This has reached crisis proportions and the hemorrhaging must stop. It is high time they, together with employers, make an effort to stem the tide of this manifestation of societal decay. Employees need to be told where to get off when it comes to focusing on being productive and offering value for money. Employers need to demand it while putting all the necessary things in place to encourage willing compliance. This thing of unions coming and fighting for rude, insubordinate, and downright disrespectful members who are employees, instead of having a private audience with them to explain how they should behave on the job, is totally unacceptable. This can only reflect the nature of the people in the unions also whose knowledge of what is and what is not acceptable behavior on the job may very well be in question. Folks, when a people stop learning, they lose big times because winners never stop learning. You can find me, folks, on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Just type in my name, Edward or Eddie Frederick, subscribe, like, and share, and be prepared to receive your mental multivitamins as straight up as I deliver them. Just before I take my leave, I would like to congratulate Salim Rahman on his selection by the private sector organizations to represent their interest in the Senate. That's a good young man, decent young man. I want to also congratulate Leo Cato on his designation as Speaker of the House of Representatives. I know Mr. Cato as quite a capable man for the task at hand. As Parliament gets ready to convene, with all elected and selected representatives in both houses carded to take their oaths, I am sure we are in for some interesting times. 
May the interest of the nation come first always. Folks, I'm in, I'm out, I'm gone. See you next week, God willing, for regular programming. Until then, stay safe, stay well. Remain lifted, please. Remain lifted. All the very best. Eddie Vacation with consultant human resource development and training specialist Eddie Frederick is powered by Grenada Cooperative, Bank Limited, and Tillian Group, Country Cold Store. Living with the pandemic hasn't been easy, but that does not mean that life has to fall apart. Work, play, and take care of your finances from home. Connect with friends on social media, host to Zoom meetings with colleagues, and use Coop Bank's e-banking to pay your bills and manage your funds. Log on to www.grenadacoopbank.com and sign up for Coop Bank's e-banking. I want the best for my family. So every meal has to be perfect. Every bite has to say, mm, mm, mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the best in frozen meats and vegetables has to come from the country cold store. Hams, turkeys, sausages, beef, pork, chicken. I just don't know my family is in safe hands. Thank you, country cold store, for being there for us for the past 40 years. The country cold store, providing the best in frozen meats and vegetables since 1969. Co-op Bank introduces e-payments. Our new e-banking feature that allows you to send money to friends or family. E-payments, a swift, simple, and secure way of transferring money. Welcome home. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all, perils big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so glad to see Peace of mind, that's our service guarantee We look after all our family Yes, we do at every opportunity MTN Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions For your protection and investment Live well financially We have a special challenge to all who decide to come into the room And be a part of edification the person making the most outstandingly relevant comment in keeping with our topic is in for a special prize. On the table is a breakfast for two at Oliver's Restaurant at world-famous Six Star Diamond Five Diamond Spice Island Beach Resort. Lucky winner must make a reservation and present gift certificate upon arrival at the appointed time to redeem this gift. This will give you a wonderful opportunity to experience great service like you've never experienced it right here in Grenada from a business that is locally owned, locally managed, locally staffed, and locally trained. A true symbol of our national independence, Spice Island Beach Resort. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Eddie Vacation with consultant human resource development and training specialist Eddie Frederick is powered by Grenada Cooperative, Bank Limited, and Tillian Group, Country Cold Store. Living with the pandemic.